Hello, today I would like to talk about paraphrasing again, but in particular about noun plus noun combinations, right? Uh, these combinations are very useful for us and we're going to discuss them or we'll talk about them whenever we kind of come across them. The first one I have chosen uh, here is guilt trip, right? Uh, you, If you look it up in uh, Merriam-Webster, uh, the, the first option will be as a verb, right? Notice the stress, it has initial stress, guilt trip. Uh, in you guilt trip somebody into doing something, you also speak of a guilt trip, uh, which is an instance of feeling guilty. A feeling of guilt or blame caused especially by another person's uh, comment or accusation. Uh, sorry, and if you go to the definition for the verb, uh, it needs to try to manipulate the behavior of someone by causing feelings of guilt. Now, if you look this up in Oxford, um, Unfortunately, you will not have a separate entry, uh, but it will appear as an idiom. And it's things you say to somebody in order to make them feel guilty about something. So don't lay. Notice again how useful uh, Oxford is going to be for learners because it tells you what verb collocates with the expression. Don't lay a guilt trip on your child about schoolwork, right? Very uh, timely. Um, I imagine parents doing that right now. Um, so um, why do I want to focus on noun plus noun combinations and why in combination with paraphrasing? Because we're going to have to do what I said we would be doing when we paraphrase. Two things. One is used is use sorry different structures to explain an idea uh, because actually we'll need to expand these uh, combinations of two nouns uh, and two because in order to do that we will have to show how we understand something right uh, so the two things will go hand in hand uh, explaining what we understand plus using um, English in different structures so that we basically practice English, right? Now, why now plus now uh, combinations? Because usually they're very cryptic, right? Uh, usually they're not uh, straightforward. The word cryptic is a very nice one. Uh, it's a word of a Greek origin. That's why there's a Y here. A meaning with a meaning that is hidden or not easily understood. Notice we find here the other variations for the word cryptically. And if we go to uh, Merriam-Webster, the definition for cryptic is going to be much more nuanced as i have been telling you uh there will be so it's about something hidden or ambiguous uh something mysterious right another word of greek origin with a y here um another way of referring to cryptic i mean noun plus noun combinations tend to be cryptic as opposed to being an ambiguous, check the pronunciation here, right, ambiguous, uh, two stresses, a primary stress here in B and uh, a secondary stress here, meaning uh, that they can be understood in only one way, so it's the opposite of that, and an equi unequivocal, sorry. Uh, why have I chosen guilt trip? Because I know that, uh, you know, that expression, because you have seen it a lot, you know, the context in which uh, guilt trip appears, uh, you've heard it, uh, heard the expression uh, on many occasions. And because of that, you're familiar with the expression and the definition helps a lot. But uh, notice that here, uh, the definition for um, guilt trip told us that we can use it to manipulate the behavior of others now why would we do that when do we when do we do this guilt tripping right we do this when we want to get something out of someone so the idea of manipulation is not just solely to get someone to do something but it's something that we want um to benefit us in some way right um uh Another reason why I want us to work with noun plus noun, com noun, plus noun combinations uh, is because usually they're figurative. Uh, remember, we saw in another video what uh, figurative language is. And also, I would like to say that for many years, uh, many, many years, actually, uh, in a book, Metaphors We Live By, Lakoff and Johnson have said that actually all language is figurative, right? That we don't directly uh, call a spade a spade and that's why we need to spell them out we need to uh, unpack the meaning inside these phrases right
Um, also, what I wanted to tell you about these phrases is that uh, let, let me go back to uh, this one. If we look up a uh, pipe dream, once again, we'll find uh, the stress at the beginning in this case, right? A pipe dream. That's another one that you know uh, very well. It's a hope or a plan that is impossible to achieve or not practical. But if we uh, look it up here. It becomes an illusory or fantastic plan, a hope or a story. Sorry, a, uh, an illusory or fantastic plan, hope or story. And you know, uh, this dream does not include any kind of pipe, but if you would like to know, you can check the uh, etymology of the word and you will know that it comes from the fantasies brought about by the smoking of opium. And in order to, to smoke opium, there were pipes involved, right? So that's where it comes from. Um, but what I wanted you to see is that it's impossible to see through the meaning of pipe and dream unless you have seen these expressions in context. And once again, I want to tell you that you know what they mean because you have seen them uh, a lot in context. Uh, but what happens when we find these two words? Um, in this case, uh, I want to show the word attributive. Why is that? Because I want to show you that actually what is happening when you have two nouns is that the first one is having an attributive function. Attributive means that it's used before a noun to describe it. So um, in blue sky and in a family business, blue and sky, sorry, blue and family are attributive. That is to say they have an adjectival function. They qualify another noun. But in this case, in family business, we have two nouns. So what will happen, for example, when we look up the word baby? When we look up the word baby, the first definition will be that of a noun. But here, in this case, uh, uh, in the left uh, margin, sorry, in the right margin, you will find that adject sorry that baby can function function as an adjective. And that's very odd, I assume, to you. Uh, and it can also function as a verb, right? Now, if we look, if we look up the definition for uh, sorry for the adjective, you will find in this case they use a very unusual collocation, which is not baby steps, the one I wanted actually, but uh, baby carrots, right? Let's see what happens if we look up baby steps. Yes, you do have it there. Now, baby step is not the step of a baby. Once again, this is a figurative expression to refer to very small steps, right? So you take baby steps. Uh, once again, we see the stress at the beginning, right? For two nouns. This is the most frequent thing, though not necessarily what happens always. And also another frequent aspect of noun plus noun combinations is that uh, they uh, are usually singular right though there are some uh, plural forms like a drinks cabinet or a clothes shop or the arms race or the trades unions right um but what always uh, what will always happen is that the first noun will be the attributive noun. So maybe sometimes you find these expressions in the dictionary, as I did just now, you just look up baby step and the dictionary will give you the expression or you need to check the adjectival form of the noun that uh, uh, functions attributively, right, uh, with the other noun. Mm, okay. Well, a couple of things I want to say uh, that are very straightforward. Say this is a typical example from uh, a book. Milk chocolate, right, is not the same as chocolate milk. Now, in this case, you will see that the stress actually uh, falls in the second word. It's milk chocolate. Milk chocolate is a light brown chocolate made with milk. So it's a type of chocolate. But what happens if I speak about chocolate milk? I doubt there will be an entry. I never checked before doing this, but it is actually you no. Know, uh, it is actually at, when when you speak of uh, sorry, not milk chocolate, but when you speak of chocolate milk. In that case, it is not a ch type of chocolate, but rather a type of milk, milk that has chocolate 
in it, right? Now, um, what happens between the relationship, sorry, in the relationship between the two members varies a lot. In her book, Words in the Mind, Jean Aitchinson speaks about the combinations with pills, for example. She says there are headache pills and fertility pills and heart pills, but headache pills attack the headache. Fertility pills, fertility like this, fertility, fertility pills actually produce fertility and heart pills, heart like the heart, heart pills actually aid the heart. So we can see that the relationship between these two nouns is not always the same. Sometimes it will be very straightforward, you may say. For example, a coffee house. What is a, ho a coffee house? Well, naturally will tell me that it is a place where coffee is sold, but it is not a house in itself, is it? It is actually a kind of shop. And if you think about it, they do not sell coffee beans, but the coffee that you produce with the beans. So. Even though this may seem obvious to you, in order to explain uh, these noun plus noun combinations, even if they are as simple as milk, chocolate, chocolate milk, or coffee house, and even hard pills, you will need to unpack the meaning. Whenever you come across them, I will ask you to use a verb, right? So for milk chocolate, it is a chocolate that is made with milk right and maybe for coffee house it is a place not a house um, a shop where coffee is sold and that would be the simple one right i mean actually you could we could go on describing this i would like you to think about uh other combinations that you already know uh i used as i said guilt trip and um and pipe dream because i knew you would know them but do you know some of these Did you know checkbook journalism? Uh, the ones I'm going to show you are very well known, and that is why they merit an entry in the dictionary, right? The dictionary has made room for the whole thing because it has become sort of fossilized. Uh, and notice in this case, now the stress lands in the second word. There's my favorite are, uh, my favorite noun plus noun combinations are checkbook journalism, gunboat diplomacy, right? And champagne socialism. In all of these, uh, or socialist actually, they have the socialist combination. In all of these, uh, the stress landed in the second word. So as you can see, there's a lot of room for variation. What will always happen when we come across a noun plus noun combination is that I will ask you to unpack them. That is to say, to paraphrase them, which means both explain the meaning in full and use other structures to repeat the same idea. Okay, thank you. That is all.